Hello, my name is Dr. Biavano, and today we're going to talk about tracheostomy suctioning. Um, first off, you need to check your physician's orders and compare it to your uh, procedure card. Make sure that your, the patient has ordered a trach cleaning, or excuse me, suctioning on this patient. Um, also, you need to make sure that um, properly uh, identify the patient by checking or getting the patient to state their first and last name, as well as stating their full date of birth. After the completion has been done, the patient has properly been um, identified as the patient who they say they are. Um, we will then transition um, into the suction part. You want to make sure that the patient is sitting in this position here. Um, you want to make sure that they are in the semifollers or follow position, unless it's contraindicated, but allow the patient to be in an upright position. Then make sure that our suction is turned on and the setting is the correct. Um, making sure that you have all the proper equipment in the room. Make sure you have your kits. Make sure you have your saline. Make sure that everything is in the room so you don't prevent you from walking back and forth in and out of the room. Because this is a sterile procedure. Um, it's a clean procedure at parts, but then it's um, when you actually suction with your hand, you should be sterile. Um, Saying that, let's get started. Let's move. Okay, wash your hands. Uh, you want to make sure you have your right PPIs, which is a mask and a gown. Uh, purpose of the video is I do not have a gown or a mask, but I do have gloves. So we, um, I would then put on some clean gloves. I'm gonna open some clean gloves. Put this guy on. The video. I'm just gonna show you. I have clean gloves on. So I have clean gloves on. Next thing is I'm going to take my catheter. Uh, so we're going to open this guy up here, okay? You're going to open the kit up. Take your gear. Take your sterile field. And make sure our hand open up away from you. Down, make sure that you can touch the outside edges of it, but you do not want to touch the center because it's contaminated. If you have the contents on the inside of it, you want to flip down and get everything on there. Um, this next part, we have, I will then get sterile gloves for this procedure from this point on. Um, we Make sure that you also have the saline. Um, you have, let's see, you got my sterile, you have my sterile gloves, okay, sterile gloves. I should take that back. Before I put my sterile gloves on, I want to take clean gloves and move them forward. This will be over here. So I have this open. I'm going to flip my solution, okay. Making sure that no bacteria in the inside of here goes in the little box here. Just gonna pour the saline in there. Okay. Then I'm gonna get my sterile gloves. Wash my hands, sterile gloves. Got my sterile gloves on now from this point on. Okay. That means my hands are sterile, I can touch everything on here. So let me come to this point here. Show you this here for you. This is the suctioning. Um we wanna make sure that the you take, you want to pick a hand that you want to keep clean, one hand that's going to be sterile. So, this hand, my right hand, I'm going to make sh dirty. Okay, well, not dirty, it's just going to be clean. So, you want to wrap it in an area like this. Okay, I'm going to keep it like this. So, I have, there's another hose that connects this to the suction we turned on earlier. It's all turned on. Got it on there. Um, before I get started, you never want to just hold it down. You want to kind of pulsate. And as you're going down into the tray, you're going in. And when you come out, you pulsate and you twist out. All right. Um, that's just a little background knowledge on that uh, as well. So now we have, we want to make sure that we test it. 
obviously you don't want to go jump straight into it and it doesn't work. So with this here, you take your, you got your, it's going to be my clean hand, it's my sterile hand. So stick it in, saline, make sure that it suctions through, so it's pulsating, make sure. Every time you hold it down, it's obviously going to suck. So that's how you know if it's suctioning or not. If you hold your finger on it, it's going to suck through, if you don't, it's not going to suck. Um, that's how you make sure that the, the tube or the suction device is working correctly. The next thing is you have your patient. You uh, you tell them to uh, take some deep breaths. They obviously have their nasal cannula on. Um, you have the nasal cannula on, and throughout uh, throughout you have the patient deep breathe. You have them deep breathe, and you remove with your clean hand off oh, clean hand now. You remove the oxygen source from them. At this point here, you want to make you want to then take the catheter and advance it uh, about 10 to 12 centimeters into the patient or until they cough. It's going to be like a more like a um, like a gag. Like you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it when you're in the hospital setting. You'll see the patient. It kind of like gag like this here. You know at that point there you can begin the suction. Um, but a key you never want to suction going into the patient. Okay, so we're going to go in, we're going to push it in, go into the patient, all right, and then they start to gag like this here. We're going to then pulsate coming out and twisting. If you notice my ring, my hand, ring hand here, you twist it coming out, we're going to do it coming out. You want to um, you want to make sure that the patient will take deep breaths and try to cough in between the suctions. Um, at that time, you want to have your stethoscope around your neck. I usually keep it just here around the neck so you can easily take your clean hand because it's sterile. You take your clean hand and you put it on your ears and you touch and you auscultate and tell them to deep breathe. As they're deep breathing, you're listening to see if there's any more mucus in there or anything that needs to come up. So depending what you find, what your assessment tells you is if you need to continue this or not. If you... If you think that the uh, procedure needs to go on again, then you're going to take your catheter and you're going to take it in saline again. You're going to suction it. You're going to kind of clear the line through there, all right? You're going to go do this step again. You're going to tell your patient, oxygenate again. You're going to take that off. You're going to take it and you're going to stick it back in the tray. Go into the patient with your sterile hand. Feed it in until the patient coughs or about 10 to 12 centimeters and once they do that you uh, suction out you're pulsating and then an hour twist with motion coming out you never again want to hold hold the suction down coming into the catheter or into the trach you don't want to do that because you cause damage to mucosis um, also you want to allow rest because these patients are obviously having some kind of respiratory distress or having the trait, there's some kind of respiratory problems going on. You don't want it just to be a speedy process. You don't want to go bam, back and forth, back and forth, and suction it so many times. You want to make sure that there's at least a 30 second to one minute window for suction in each time. Um, after that, you don't want to do any more than three suctionings per time. Uh, after that, your patient should be feeling a lot better. Uh, obviously, you suck in all of the mucus out of that airway or out of that, that area. So, theoretically, it clears that passage. So, preventing a better airway. And um, then you want to take and discard this here. Discard everything you have on. Um, and you want to wash your hands. And then you want to have your suction. Everything's turned off now. And then you want to have your oxygen back on your patient, you want to take your uh, stethoscope and you want to listen to your patient in each quadrant, okay? Making make sure that there's uh, um, good lung sounds, making sure that the patient is obviously not in any, any distress, making sure and reading them, making sure their O2 is fine uh, or within normal limits, uh, making sure that there's no uh, crackling or anything that wasn't there prior. 
your initial baseline vital or initial respiratory assessment. Um, you always want to make sure that you document everything you performed, everything you've seen and you, or observed throughout the process. You want to make sure that, or, and also the patient response, did the patient try to vomit or did it, you know, anything that the patient's response is, you make sure and document it for later. And to, it may help the nurse or the physician in later um, episodes that, okay, it shows you 10 to 12 centimeters, but Miss Smith only at 8, she starts gagging. So well, we're not going to go to 12. We're going to go to 8 because that's what that patient, you know, there's just certain things that we can document to uh, prevent the patient going through these things numerous times. If we know that patient's norm is X, Y, and Z, then we need to document that so the next nurse, the next physician will see that and just make the flow a lot easier as well. Another really important deal, make sure that there is an unused sterile treat suction kit in the room when you leave. So in case something, if you're in the room and uh, the patient seems a little distressed, Instead of having to run all the way to the Walmart room, it's in the room already. You can suction your patient and prevent that airway because say if that airway becomes occluded or a, a big mucus plug that you can't get, if it's there and you got to run down the hall, that's so many minutes without that patient being able to breathe. So that's really important to make sure and keep that in the room at all times and document all your findings. Um, that is all to tracheostomy suctioning. Thank you so much for watching.